literature um, contains in itself more than any other discipline. I know that there are many other people who would claim the same thing for their disciplines, but um, everything is in literature. If you have a great work of literature, it tells you about psychology. It certainly tells you what's happening historically. It includes every facet of society. Uh, it tells you in particular what is the individual doing in society, at least when we're talking about fiction, modern fiction, which is what this course would be teaching. Um, I think that there you see what we confront. Um, and particularly for the Jews, who confront a unique problem, I think, historically. Literature's had a way of explaining that, or of working it out, or of investigating that in, in very rich ways. Well, it's a complicated paradox that Jews experience. Um, for one thing, uh, Jews believe very deeply in power, but they ascribe power to the Almighty. And if you, uh, if you know Jewish liturgy, and if you know Jewish texts, you know how deeply Jews believe in power. God is the king of kings. God is the ruler of the universe. And more than anything else, God is almighty. So in a sense, Jews felt that they were in a contractual agreement with the source of the greatest power if only they could satisfy God's expectations. So I think in a sense, everything else to the Jews was puny by comparison. What could the Babylonians do to them? What could the Romans do to them? Yes, the Romans could conquer them, other people could conquer them, but it was really God who allowed this to happen and it was God who would redeem them finally. So I think it's a great mistake to think that Jews don't believe in power. Traditionally, Jews were very convinced that they were really in an amazing relationship with power. It isn't so much that. It's that Jews have never sought to conquer anyone else. They have no incentive for aggression. Um, that is an amazing plus, we would think. Isn't it wonderful to have a people that has no incentive to aggress against others, that just wants to be left alone to do its own work, to develop in its own ways, that lays claim to what is ultimately a very, very, very tiny land, right? Look at the map of the Middle East. Look at how much land the Arabs have. It's ludicrous to think that there is any problem that concerns land. I mean, no people on earth has claimed a smaller piece of land. Even Israel, at its greatest, is still a very, very small slice of land. So it's not that the that, that Jews don't now understand that they have to hold on to that land. It's just that they have no impulse to aggress against others. This is quite debilitating. If you always have to play defense, you know, just think of it in terms of sports. Can you imagine a team that always wants to play only defense because it really doesn't want to reach the other basket, because it doesn't want to score against the other team? It only wants the other team to love it. It wants the only other team, wants the other team to, to embrace it, to accept it, to tolerate it. So um, I think that this is one of the problems that Jews have politically that um, it's very hard for them to really do what it takes to make others realize that they are not going to give way, that they are not going to accommodate anymore as far as their sovereignty is concerned. No one is afraid of the Jews. That is why they are a no-fail target. Everyone loves to target them because they know that there's no price to be paid. There is not even, Israel does not even have the death penalty for the worst of terrorists against it. This is unbelievable. And I'm not even sure that this is moral or just in any sense of what the world can conceive of as justice. So 
Am I afraid of a surfeit of Jewish power? No. So I'm really looking forward to this course in Cambridge.